then again, sometimes you got to pop out and show people. So that what does this have to do with toddler and royal seat? We cannot let the enemy trip, uh, trick us up with fear because that, that is the main thing that blocks our faith. Yeah. Anything that confer- co- concerns fear enters into your mind, combat it with faith. Yeah. Fear cannot stand in the presence of faith. Yeah. Do not let fa- fear keep you in your toddler state. Yeah. Embrace your royal seat that you may do the work God has yeah. called you to do. Yeah. And to, to do that, we must increase our faith. Yeah. How do we do that? Romans 10, 17. Yeah. So then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We must apply it daily. We must pray daily. We must build our relationship with our Father that we may be able to carry and to carry out his instructions. Because in the royal seat, you command and demand. The enemy has no authority because you have dominion over him. In your royal seat, you know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose, in your royal seat, you count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptations, knowing that this is the trying of your faith, work in patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, one in nothing. James 1, 2 through 4. Taking your royal seat doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. It means you have a knowledge who God has called you to be, a commitment to carry out your duty. Remember, no matter if it's God testing or the enemy trying to tempt you or trying to paralyze you with fear, it's the stretching of your faith. Yeah. Like I told you last year, the more you stretch, the more powerful you get. There needed to be some work done in that yard. And one thing that we've done, we have an old rugged chain link fence. And because of that chain link fence, we've allowed the vines to grow across it, right? And, and when, you're, when, you're, when, you, when you get those vines growing, you, you're happy about it because it gives you a good sense of privacy, right? It, it kind of gives you that rustic Ivy League look for a little while. Um, and, and it's just something that helps hide the hideousness of that ch- old rusty chain link fence. But as I begin to toil in that yard and, and, and mow the lawn and, 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 and trim the bushes back, I noticed that that creeping, crawling vine had started to go everywhere. It, it was grabbing up everything. It, it was taking up the good grass. And it was pulling on the fence and making it more difficult to work with. And I started to trim it back. And as I was trimming it back, I noticed it wasn't easy. So I called on Siri. And here was the kicker for me. <laughs> I was reading about removing the vines. And the thing about it was, if you cut the vines and touch it with your bare hands, the inside of the vines is poisonous. And it had me start to think about how sin works in our own life. How sometimes things look so pleasing to our eye. And, and right at the time where we're really ready to let it go, we find out that it's so deep-rooted inside of us that it has become poisonous. You ever had something inside of you and you knew it wasn't good and you wanted to get rid of it, but it just wouldn't let you go? I'll say it like the Apostle Paul said. He said, I find then that in the law that when I do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to that which was sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am. (laughs) Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I say this because the Bible is so specific about about our eyes and, and, and the things we should be seeking, right? And in that yard, all I was doing was just seeking for it to look good. Right? That's all I was doing. But it took me a whole different direction. Good, Tim. So now we find ourselves in verse 25. And this is when it really starts to get good. It says, around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and other prisoners were listening. Now, that's w- this is when it started to get good. Now, they said they were beaten, severely beaten. They ch- Now, not only did they beat them, 
after they beat him near to death, they put him in chains and shackles, and they put him in the innermost part of the dungeon. Now, you got to go through gates and shackles to get out of this thing, but they didn't trust that the Lord wouldn't. They had more faith in their God than they did because they did all of that to make sure that they didn't escape. But now keep in mind, there's no Band-Aids, there's no ibuprofen, there's no Tylenol, there's no Viking, and ain't no morphine. These boys are just sitting there in pain in shackles. But it said at midnight they were praying and singing, and the other prisoners were listening. People were listening, and they knew what just happened to them, and they were listening to them praise. And my next point is that people are watching and observing how we go through our trials. They watching us. They got their eye on us to see what you're going to do. They want us to fail. They want us to go off and cut the monkey and cuss folks out. They are waiting to see how we handle our trials. But as important as it is what you do when you go through your trials, it's more important what you don't do when you go through those trials. Because Paul and Silas could have easily been cussing and, and fussing and talking about how they were going to retaliate and trying to get a gang of men to go back and fight them. They could have did all that. But they didn't do that. They didn't do it. All they did was have praise and worship. Them boys in their hands, straight praise and worship. And doesn't that sound like what we need to do in our lives when times get hard, when things, we may not have been physically beat, we may not have been, you know, cast aside, well, we probably have been cast aside, but we didn't get the physical beating that they had, but there have been some situations in our lives that it felt like we were beaten. And that's the time when we need to be praising, and our praise and our worship in those times will get us through our brokenness. It'll get us past those things in our past that have been holding us back. It'll get us past ourselves. 